prepare for trouble. Make it double. What's going on guys? Logan JYA here and I gotta tell you, Konami couldn't have waited for a better time to drop the ban list. I've got a lot going on right now and this is the last thing that I needed. But I tell you what, it's pretty exciting because we got Ben 10 to 2, which means we're going to be trying out a whole lot of new things with Drytron. Now mind you, we did get hit because they banned Verite, which means no more easy DPE combos. But we got a whole lot more in store from you. This is just the first initial take very minimal testing, but I think the logic is there. So I think this has the potential to be a very strong build. So if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe, like, and check out the Twitch stream because we're going to be testing Drytron all the time over there on DB, Master Duel, a whole lot more. So I don't want to preface this too much, my friends. Let's get to it. What's going on guys? Logan JYA here and the ban list dropped guys. I don't think we can say that we're too surprised about what ended up being hit in the form of Verte Anaconda. And I'm going to be honest, as happy as I am for Ben 10 coming back to 2, which is super exciting for us, I think that the hit to Verte probably hurt more than Ben 10 coming back, just for our current logic of the deck. But there are so many different new realms we can explore. I think Branded Drytron's gonna be really good. I think that there's still so many different ways to Scythe Lock, which we'll explore. So if you haven't already smashed that subscribe button for the Dry Kage, you definitely should do so now. So you're in the loop for all the new profiles we're gonna be dropping. We're gonna be doing guest features. We're gonna be having other Drytron players come on board to show us their stuff. Anyway, guys, I don't wanna preface this too much. Without further ado, let's get into the this list. I'm going to preface this by saying that this list is not tested yet. <laughs> not against the meta at least. This is a exclusively theory crafted list that took some research from a bunch of different builds over the past you know few months and trying to figure out what the best way to play with not only the two Ben 10 but without DPE, Scythe, Aurorodon, those type of strategies would be. So no, there is no Scythe Lock in this deck. Yes, I know it is still possible to do. Yes, I will be testing it. Yada, yada, yada. It will be happening. So without further ado, let's hop into this. We got three copies of Alpha, three Zeta. No questions there. Are you ready to have your minds blown? We're back to the old golden ratio, baby. We're doing two Gamma and two Delta. This was exclusively to keep the deck to 40 cards because consistency is a very important part of this particular build. And you guys are going to see why as we move on. Moving on from here, two copies of Diviner. And then here we go. All right, hold your breath. We got the one Vanities Ruler in here, okay? So there's some serious logic here. A lot of the times, if you open Alpha plus Zeta, it depends on what matchup you're fearing, right? Alpha plus Zeta will either guarantee you perfection or guarantee you Vanity's Ruler, one or the other. But the thing is you have to kind of pick and choose based on the matchup and seeing what the other cards in your hand are. Two card combos aren't as easy to explain with this deck because of that reason. And that's why at the end of this video, we're actually gonna be doing some test hands, but we will be doing combo tutorials. Don't you worry, just subscribe and you'll be in the loop for all of them. And let's smash 150 likes on this video and I'll guarantee a combo tutorial before next week. All right, so yeah. Moving on from there, we have the two copies of Orange Light, because it goes in with our main strategy here, you'll see. We're also main decking one copy of Lancia. Now you could change the slot for something else, I'll talk about that in a minute, but right now I am main decking the one copy of Lancia. We really don't know how the meta is going to shape out to be. If there's a lot of Flunderese players, we're going to want to search in that Lancia. If there's a lot of uh, Fanonite players, for whatever reason, we're going to want to be searching that Lancia. Against Despia, eh, it really doesn't do that much, so... It's not the best card there. Now, for the obvious part of this strategy, the main win con that we're going for here in this build is perfection. So, obviously, we're going for perfection and or vanity's ruler. Those are our win cons. And you'll see that the deck is really built around this card. Because, of course, we've also got the two Ben 10 to go along with it. And Ben 10 plus pre prep is an FTK. Not really, but it's absolutely insane. That's probably your best two-card combo, so we're trying to play as many ways to get to that two-card combo as we normally would for Alpha and Zeta, because it's just as strong. Moving on, we got the one copy of Ida 10. I'm still trying to figure out how this best fits into our main combo lines. For now, it is staying in the build. It's a good extender. It searches you whichever ritual spell you need in the situation, or adds it back, like Medionis or the... Um, the perfection one again the combos aren't as linear for this build or at least i haven't found a linear path for them yet but ida 10 is still very important in my opinion and on that same note we are playing natasha we can actually do three steals again can you guys believe that we're back to doing three steals possibly if it comes down to it how often is that really going to come up 
We don't know, but we'll find out. We got the one copy Draco Nids. I am still playing this. Theoretically, a cuttable slot here, guys. But I don't want to cut it. I think it's a really important card. I think it's a good backup plan as well. Uh, say Droll creeps its way back in. Say Drytron ends up being best deck. I think Draco Nids is going to be essential, and it's definitely essential in some of the other builds we're going to be trying. So again, be sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss a single bit of those, because we've got a lot of them coming. All right, spell lineup, guys. Oh, I'm going to get flamed. I'm going to get so flamed for this, and I'm already regretting it as I'm placing these cards down. Ugh, I'm only doing two Nova. Oh, please don't kill me. I know, I know, I know. I ragged on this for so long. I railed against... Listen, I love Shu Ping to death, bro. But I said that this was so incorrect. But in this build, in this particular build, where we're at a hard 40 cards, I'm doing two Nova and one Fafnir. I hate to do it. I, I, I genuinely hate to do it. But this is, this is the way I'm going to keep the deck down to 40 cards. Seeing multiples of Nova is just not the way. I, I, I just can't, I can't rationalize it. So this is what we're doing this time around. And of course, we've got the one copy of Medionis to Ritual Summon. I've been thinking that it might be a good idea to actually play a second copy of Medionis, considering how prevalent DD Crow has become. So that's something else we may consider in future builds. But for now, we're still sticking it to the one. Also, like I said, stolen straight from Shu Ping here. No credit to myself. And my boy Carlos. Two emergency. Two emergency. Is that correct? I still don't know. I want to see names. I really do. But for this build, our real two-card combo is prep. Where any way to Ben 10 plus pre-prep is our real two-card combo. So, yeah. But I understand that that's not the best logic. Uh, moving on. One copy of Foolish Burial. We're really just trying to diversify our way to names here. So it's not just Emergencies and Novas. We have Foolish, we have Fafnir, and of course we have a bunch of different names and another card we play. Um, the FTK cards, of course, three prep and three pre-prep. Of course, they're, this is just so good for playing through hand traps, playing into things, uh, and instantly establishing that negate. Like, if you see Alpha plus Zeta plus pre-prep, you're guaranteed Vanity's Ruler plus... Um, perfection it's phenomenal and then this is the big thing here uh triple prosperity this is again borrowed from Xu Ping, but different different deck build of course but similar logic here because we want to search for those key combo pieces right we have such big power cards and the other way i'm looking at this is we're playing drytron here like we play penned right so prada prosperity is that searcher that's going to grab you whatever you need whether it be the pre-prep the the, uh, the Ben 10, the Alpha, the Zeta, whatever you need, Pot of Prosperity will hopefully dig it in for you. And we have some pretty easy banish targets because we made a lot of room in the extra deck with this new build. Last two cards we're playing is one Dawn of the Herald and one Call by the Grave to rounding it out, even 40 cards. Moving into the extra deck, I'm going to be relatively quick here for the obvious stuff. We've got two copies of Moy Beta Fafnir. No changes there. One of the Leerlusk Assembled Nightingale. This is important, I think, especially if we're going to see more Flunderies. It's going to come up more in games 2 and 3, because game 1, it's really hard to beat the Flunderies board. It may come down to that situation where you got a scoop if you don't win the die roll. I'm just being blatantly honest here, guys. So that's when the side deck really becomes essential. But for now, 100%, we're keeping this in. Uh, I think it might also be important in our future builds where we get a little bit more... Uh, going second card heavy in the main, as you guys probably saw, it was an all gas strategy. We're really just trying to put up a hard going first board, just like Pendulum Logic, guys, just like Pen Logic. And of course, there's so many different decks which boards we can break with in archetypal cards. Despia boards, we actually can break. Um, Sword Soul boards, easy clap. Eldritch back row, easy clap. So, just throwing that out there. The really thing we, we struggle against is the Flunderies. Uh, moving on, the Downer Magician, of course to go with our Divine Arsenal Zeus. Zeus is essential. The one copy of Beatrice, which comes up a lot. You guys already know the logic with the one name hands. It also is really good as a combo piece in some of these more, or I should say, less linear plays. So Beatrice is a must. The one copy of the Relinquished Anima. Uh, I, I'm playing this instead of Link Rebo again. Just to have another going second card, a board breaker in the extra deck for those players that choose to disrespect it. Good to have. The one copy of IP Mascarina. Again, our logic in this extra deck is a little different, so you'll see. We're also playing the Unicorn. And don't forget about the IP tagging out into the indestructible Boral Sword. Spoiler alert, still really strong. We're playing the Unicorn, 100%, as our main IP target. But we've got two other 
IP targets, like I alluded to earlier, the Boral Sword, since we're doing perfection, it's it's pretty darn good, guys. Pretty darn good to have access to that Boral Sword. It's going to be putting in work for you, trust me. We got the one copy of the Underworld Goddess, right? This is an interesting one. Uh, again, this is all theory. Haven't had a chance to test, but I'm telling you right now, guys, that Underworld Goddess, it just sounds really good on paper. Cutting off that access to the graveyard, as well as not being able to be removed unless it's targeted, that means Mirror Jade's not doing crap to it. It's a big 3k boy, and when you tag out with IP using an opponent's monster, there's no better feeling in the world. Also outs annoying things like the Adagnister boss monster. Moving on, we've got the one copy of Elder Entity Entis for your Herald. Same thing with the Herald of the Arclight, 100% mandatory. And then the last thing we're playing, this is huge, is the Black Rose. This is essential for breaking the Despia boards, I feel like. Uh, let me just put it this way. Diviner plus Nova outs the board. Um, any one name with the ability to summon it plus Diviner outs the board. A name plus Ben 10 outs the board. It's really, really good. It's just a good piece of utility to have access to. So I don't think they're going to see it coming. We'll find out. But hey, man, it makes them waste their interruptions at non-opportune times if they do see it coming. So again, it's... Trust me, guys. Just test it. Run this into a Despia board and let me know how it goes. All right. Side deck real quick. Again, this is all theory, so this is very subject to change. I want to do a quick shameless plug to your playmat. If you want custom card sleeves, go check them out 100%. Use my affiliate link in the description, please, and that would be great appreciated. You can put whatever picture you want on the back of the sleeves, so check it out. All right, side deck. I went undefeated last Thursday, playing a 50-card Cyclock Drytron build, of which we cannot do in the same way because obviously it took advantage of Verte and DPE, but DD Crow was clutch. So I think DD Crow is one of the best side deck cards against the Brandon matchup, against the Mirror match, against a whole lot more. DD Crow, essential. And the cool thing is it can be a sixth card that you draw into, and it deals with the Branded in red. So really, really important. We're playing the other two copies of Lancia to bring in against the Flunderese and any other Banished decks. I am side decking the three copies of the Forbidden Droplets. I am also strongly in favor of finding room for them in the main, just not in this particular build, okay guys? But we still need a way to deal with those really obnoxious monsters, so we are definitely side decking those droplets. Triple copies of Twin Twisters. Again, Prank Kids isn't a worry anymore, but we want to be ready against those back row decks, and it's also really good against the Flunt Reese decks. When you get to drop this in the draw phase, perfect. It also helps against those counterside type cards, like, uh, like Anti-Spell Fragrance. You know, we can take care of that real quick. Moving on from there, we got triple copies of Evenly Matched. I think this is probably one of, if not the most important side deck cards going into the new format. Uh, time will tell, but this provides so much work against Despia, Flunderies, Pendulum, Eldritch, and a whole lot more. I think Evenly is essential. I think you're a fool if you're not playing it. And then the last side deck card, bringing the list to a close, is a Red Reboot. Now, again, this is all theory, and it's a really interesting take. I am going to really look forward to testing it. You guys should definitely come over to the Twitch stream if you want to see us test it live. But no more blabbering. Let me show you a test hand, and we'll bring this to a close. Feels so weird to actually shuffle 40. <laughs> all right, guys. One more final cut, and we're going to do this test hand. So without further ado, let's get into it. A riffle, a cut... Let's see how we open. We are starting off with broken, broken, not as good, broken. Okay, <laughs> is this even fair? Is this even fair? I just shuffled and went straight into this and this hand's insane. So let me just show you how high the ceiling gets with this deck and I'll show you another test hand after. I'll keep it quick. So with a hand like this, you're obviously gonna be wanting to start off. Listen, you got a lot of ways to bait here, uh, but since you still have full combo with Alpha plus Zeta and protected backed up with a fairy, the first thing we're gonna do is go for that pre-prep 100% because if anything, at worst, it's gonna bait interruption. At best, it's gonna guarantee you that you've got the moves, all right? Perfection and uh, the ritual spell. There it is, Dawn of the Herald. Perfect. And the cool thing about playing a consistent build is that you're going to see hands like this more often, baby. It just comes down to that. So we got that locked and loaded right now. Theoretically, we're safe to go forward because we've got the perfection plus the orange light. Next thing we're going to do is go for the emergency. Emergency will add Zeta, 100%. Uh, usual move, Alpha Pitch Zeta. Now, if we were to get hand-trapped here with, like, I don't know, like uh, an Ash Blossom, 
would highly consider oranging it, just saying, so we can continue to play. Because um, if we let that go, we still have moves, like we could Zeta pitch the second copy of Alpha, overlay for Moi Beta, but we're not going to have access to Ben 10. So I think we'd rather have access to Ben 10 in that situation. Just putting it out there, that that's what I would do. But anyway, so go for the pitch, grab ourselves the Ben 10, and since we opened with that beautiful pre-preparation of rights, we're going to go for that Dawn next, 100%. Invalidate any other hand traps, say no to things like Bell, like DD Crow on the Zeta, which would probably get chained here, but hey man, who cares, you're still ending on minimum two Omni Negates, and that is pretty flipping good. And you can actually push it further, depending on what you search off the Ben 10. But we're going to say we go uninterrupted here. I'm going to pitch off that Ben 10, summon out that perfection. We're going to go Ben 10 effect chain link one, Dawn chain link two, so Dawn will be banished. Add back that Ben 10, and then Ben 10 effect to search. In this situation, since we opened up the orange light, I'm actually going to search the Diviner, and probably not going to end up using it. You can search anything here. You could even, you know what? You could even search Lancia here. Wouldn't even matter. It's either a pitch for your perfection, that's already on field, it's a secondary hand trap going into boards, or it is what it is. But the whole point is, with this particular hand, we're going for we're going for ruler, brother. Anyway, we'll go Zeta effect, pitch Ben 10, summon, and search. Grab the ritual spell, use Ben 10's effect. We'll grab the second copy of Ben 10 here for the free pitch. Although it really doesn't matter. We could leave we could leave this in deck and it wouldn't make a difference. Because next step we're gonna overlay these two. Go for Moy Beta. Our favorite beta. The only good beta in this deck. You shouldn't be playing any others. We'll use this effect. Big time send gamma here. Next, we'll activate Medionis. Detach off Moi Beta. Summon out Ben 10. We'll go gamma effect engrave. Pitch off that Ben 10, like so. Bing. Bong. Summon back Zeta. Trigger Ben 10 for another free search. Here you can grab, you want to grab the Vanities Ruler here. That part's important. Because our next step is going to be to reduce the gamma, add back the Medionis, activate it, detach off the Moi Beta, summon back the Ben 10, like so. Now we go for the Tribute Summon. We'll Tribute off whatever two, it really doesn't matter. Let's let's respect Anima, I guess. Yeah, respect Anima as much as possible. We'll summon the Vanities Ruler over here. Nah, I don't want to summon him there, I want it to look good. We'll summon it over here. I'm just going to switch these zones so it doesn't get glared. Oh, that's going to get glared regardless. So we're summoning the Vanities Ruler, and that'll let us trigger a Ben 10 search yet again. So this will lock and load the second orange light in case we're droplets or dark ruler. Perfection. No pun intended. And then we'll take these two monsters and turn them into our flex piece on the top, which will be the mighty IP Mascarina in this case, like so. So let's look at what we're ending on here. Obviously, we don't want to have to tag out the IP, but if we get hit with an imperm on ruler, we can tag those out easily. If we had an extra name, like a, um, a delta, that'd be another thing on field we could tag out. If we get, if the opponent wants to negate our whole board with droplets, they have to send three cards, and then they're still fighting through not one, but two orange lights in hand, or a Lancia, whichever is more applicable. So obviously, this was a very cracked hand, and I can show. I'm going to show you what it looks like with a worse hand in a future video. But for now, guys, I just want to show you the ceiling and our first take after the ban list. Okay, so again, smash that like button, get us to 150. We've got more Drytron builds, more testing with this one, testing with others. Come to the Twitch stream if you really want to see it all happen live, because we're going to be playing the crap out of this deck. I'm just telling you now. But for now. That's all I got for today. Logan JYA, so I have a great day. Happy ban list. I'll see you chumps later. Peace.